exactly one year ago, I did a preliminary review on Celestron 14. I promised that I'll come back and do a comprehensive review. It almost took like one year for me to come back. C14 is a pretty complex telescope. Not just the telescope is like really big scope, but it also brings enough challenges. If you ask me a question, is it worth the money? I would definitely say yes. It is pretty good value for the money that you are going to invest in. If you are thinking about the price of the scope is what you are going to invest in, I would say double that because the amount of accessories that you need to make this telescope really work are quite a lot. Whether you are using for visual or whether you are using for astrophotography, this telescope is going to provide you quite a lot of science. It's a lot of fun as well at the same time. So what are the bare minimum accessories that you need to make this telescope work? I'm primarily thinking from astrophotography reasons, not just the visual. So when I got this telescope, I got these wheels that are like tri dolly wheels. And I thought those wheels are good enough for me to bring the telescope from the garage to the location where I'm taking pictures. I quickly realized that the concrete floor that I have is not going to help the cast iron wheels to move very nicely to bring the optics here. I have to put the moving rags on the floor and uh, slowly move the telescope just to make sure that there is no vibration in the scope, whether it is primary mirror or my collimation. I think that actually is a bigger toll. I went and got the scope buggy. There is another JMI available as well. But I think the JMI Wheelie, the company that made that one, sold it to some other company and the new company is not shipping those JMI Wheelies anymore. So I was wanting to go with the scope buggy. Another reason would be the scope buggy is cheaper than the JMI. JMI comes with like six wheels, whereas this come with three wheels. Uh, I'm okay, fairly well. I mean, as long as you're moving it pretty slow, and if you tighten those bolts on the three sides, some kind of a tiles or wood pieces underneath, and if you really tighten it, you're not really keeping your telescope on the wheels. So you should be pretty good. You get a pretty good guiding. Even with the C14, your guiding is okay because it is not technically on the wheels. It is on uh, the frame itself, and underneath the frame, you have those tiles. Now, what are the other accessories that you need to actually invest in? Well, so the very first thing that you need to buy as an accessory to make this work for astrophotography is the 0.7x reducer. If you get this reducer, the scope focal length, you are going to cut it down and make the scope a bit faster. At a complete f13, it's very difficult for you to take a picture. It's very good for the planets, but I think this is going to make it better if you are trying to take the deep space pictures like galaxies or nebula, whatever, right? It's going to make it, uh, make it look better. The other investment that I would strongly recommend is to get some kind of a focuser in the back. This is not the focuser that is going to change your primary mirror. The focuser that doesn't involve the primary mirror is what you need to get. Because if you move the primary mirror during the imaging session, it's kind of difficult to go back to where you were because the focus is not really the same once you move the primary mirror. So my workflow is I usually use the focus with the primary mirror in the beginning of the imaging session and I lock these uh, locks here during the rest of the imaging session. I just use the moonlight focuser just to make sure that I make those tiny adjustments that I need. The other accessory that you need is to have a good guide scope. I think there are multiple alternatives that you have. You can have a 
half axis girder or you can have an on axis girder or you can have a guide scope so half axis girder is good but unless you have a very powerful guide guide camera half axis girder cannot give you any stars even with the powerful uh, camera i don't know if the c14 focal length uh, is going to help you do a lot of half axis guiding so it's very difficult work if you are trying to use and lot of people tried off axis guider and it's always a hit or miss so i preferred using the guide scope because one it is a very cheaper option compared to what it is and also i wanted to put a better guide scope than what i am currently using right now i'm using a celestron 80 mm guide scope it is it works okay i think the product is no longer you know shipped by celestron i think they discontinued the product but eventually i wanted to take the guide scope away and have a different guide scope there so i'm kind of it's still in works the next thing that you wanted to invest in is i definitely wanted you to have a dew shield i based on the usage of this dew shield i think this works okay it is one of the cheapest options that you have there is also a metal dew shield available from the same company astrozap i think i would have preferred the metal one because this one has a little bit of a uh, movement so i would prefer a metal one maybe down the line i might need to change the price wise i think it's probably 50 dollars more so that is something that you can think of like and also you can put a cap if you buy a metal one if you don't have a dew shield the character plate for this scope is so close to the front and whenever you have a dew it's very difficult for you to actually take pictures within the first 15 minutes or half an hour you actually start seeing the dew on your character plate and um, even after you are using a big dew heater you still see that so it's better to have a dew shield actually it takes uh, keeps the dew away most of the time so it's pretty good that way and also the stray light it keeps it away so even if you have a neighbor's light or something i think this will stop um, you know the all that light that to come in the biggest investment that you have to do with your telescope is actually the mount Uh, i went for cg xl mount any mount better than this mount is way too expensive there are several expensive mounts that can track lot better than cg xl but within the given options that i have cg xl is doing very good for me it is one of the best mounts that celestron has and also price wise decent enough so unless you really really wanted to go for an expensive mount i think this would be a good starting point you do need to buy the vernier calipers because if you are trying to image for deep space you have to make sure that your back focus is good so if it is zw or camera you know you need a 55 mm back focus but the entire back focus from the telescope to here is like 147.5 so you do need to measure from uh from the middle of from here to the moonlight focuser all the way to the um camera you know where it is it has to be 129 or 130 it can't be more than that okay you have to measure this all the time if you wanted to get a good image and also the sharp image with a good uh, fwhm the full width half maximum the focus point you also need to invest in a bathnau mask of this type this comes from farpoint astro i'll put links for all these accessories um this one is going to help you both for the hyperstar or without hyperstar as well because the sec the secondary mirror is so big in the front that goes inside okay so which is going to help you this is going to help you in both ways so those are the main accessories that you need to buy with this uh, telescope so what is my experience of taking pictures with this one if i use the 127 mm the explore scientific refractor when uh, let's say on light my during the imaging session i can save like 70 to 80% of my data i will throw away 20 30% all the time uh, i just don't want uh, something with less focus or less number of stars or too bright whatever 
But if I use rasa, I'm almost the same. Sometimes actually a little less, sometimes more. But uh, between 60 to 80 percent, I always keep rasa data, no matter what. But if I but if I use the C14, the data that I'm going to throw away would be somewhere between 70 to 80 percent. So if I take let's let's say I don't know like 700 frames. Sometimes I only keep like 70 or 140 frames. I throw away the rest of the frames. The reason why it is not bad guiding, whenever you are using like a C14 kind of scopes, particularly uh, you know regular night, you will notice a lot of atmospheric dispersion and the star is going to actually keep changing its shape because you are so close to it. It's not the focus that is that you are losing so the star keeps kind of bubbling up and down or go sideways even if you are watching live. So it's a very tiny movement but if you take a picture that is like you know 30 seconds or one minute or two minutes your star looks a little funky when you take a picture. So you don't want those stars and you want to throw away the data. So the best I retained with the Celestron 14 so far is like somewhere around like 55 to 60 percent. That was a beautiful night. I was getting extremely good and I retained like 60 percent of the data and I was very happy when, I, when, when that happens. Uh, but generally think of, uh, I mean the lowest expectation would be like 20 percent. The best expectation is like 50 to 60 percent you can retain the C14 data. In a general usage 50 to 60 percent is really good. Even if I keep the 20 percent data I'm still going to get really good frames. So that is something to think about. Whenever you are taking a picture, it is not easy. One year ago, in April of 2019, I took a picture of Whirlpool Galaxy. I wanted to take the same picture right now, and I wanted to show you guys. I don't know if my processing skills improved or not. I don't know if I'm going to get a better usage of this telescope or not. I'll show you guys the picture, and I'll compare the older picture to the newer picture. Definitely I'm thinking the newer picture is going to look better, uh, hopefully, uh, but um, that's nothing to do uh, with me using the scope. It's more to do with the processing skills. That's all it is. Uh, me using the scope, I don't know if I improved a lot, but definitely I want to tell you one thing. You learn a lot with this scope. So if from a science perspective, from an astrophotography perspective, Working with a bigger scope gives you that satisfaction uh, that no other scope can provide. But if you are not interested and if you are a kind of person where you wanted to come and just take a picture and go, this is not the scope. That night I will bring Rasa or I bring my refractor. But if I do have time, I will bring the bigger scope. If you are new to this channel, I do telescope reviews, I take pictures of comets, galaxies deep space objects and I do a lot of astronomy talk these days. So if you are interested in these kind of videos, uh, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.